you but I'm already full. Yeah. My cup is filled up and spilling over and I hope you get some of what I'm feeling right now. There is a word from the Lord. I want to say that when I was growing up I was by religious Everybody stopped for just a second there, didn't they? <laughs> what you get ready to say? Because I grew up in two fellowships in Rhode Island at Greater Hope Church of Christ, of God in Christ. Everything was done through praise. The Bible study was in praise, and the, the prayer was in praise, the song was in praise, the testimony was done through praise. The sermons and benediction were full of praise and exuberance. Everything was high-spirited in the church where my father served as a bishop. Vivacious and cheerful and lively, they did not have quiet church. It was, I recently heard somebody call what my family grew up doing undignified praise. You know, it's that kind of praise when the women didn't mind shouting and praising and their mascara running down their cheek. It was the kind of praise that the men didn't worry about their tie getting crooked while they were giving God the praise. It was the kind of church that if you bought new shoes, you didn't worry about somebody stepping on them because your feet were moving so fast in your praise, they couldn't even do that. I was by religious. Perhaps praising God was what we were told to do when we went into the church, but when we got of age, we learned that it was something that I wanted to do. When I spent summers on the eastern shore, Tubman country, with my grand grandparents, my brothers and I attended Mount Zion Methodist Church, where there were no tambourines, no drums, not much hand clapping, no speaking in tongues, very little sweat. As a matter of fact, the ushers made a point of walking around with a fan in case they even saw a sheen on your face. <laughs> Donated by the local funeral parlor just to say, if you praise too much, you may end up over here. <laughs> So that was sweat check in the Methodist church. And then one day I read this scripture for myself. And I'm going to read it out of Eugene Peterson's message Bible. It says, hallelujah. That's for my salvation and my glory. Praise God in his holy house of worship. Praise him under the open skies. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his magnificent greatness. Praise with a blast of the trumpet. Praise with strumming of strings. Praise him with castanets and dance. Praise him with cymbals and big brass drums. Praise him with fiddles and mandolins. It says, let Southeast say, earth egg, earth egg. Let everything, every living thing, every breathing thing, every created thing that God did, praise the Lord. So I venture to say this afternoon that unbeknownst to us, that even when we're sitting in here worshiping, praising God, the birds are in the trees looking in, giving God praise. Huh? We don't know that not to be true. The squirrels are on the ground 
looking for nuts to eat and they look, listen up and hear the praise in here and they probably stand up on their little back legs and give God some praise. Can you just imagine what that looks like, huh? I would imagine that the ants walking to see if anybody on their way in dropped any of their toast pieces from their breakfast that they came to church with as they're walking and trailing one another to find those crumbs stop for a second the whole line stops the first person the first ant stops and the rest of them don't know what's happening and bump up into it and they lean back in a glorified praise that's the praise i'm talking about this morning let every living creature the scripture says praise the lord now we've heard about the praise this morning in the song in the message from the elder my question is to you is where is your praise so you have the opportunity while i'm setting this up to go in your purse and pull out your praise and put it on your lap go in your pocket pull out your praise and put it on your lap pull it out of yourself wherever your praise is i want you to put it where you can see it and feel it right now Today we come together fulfilling our theme for this year's joint service, praising out loud together. So how do we do that? How do we praise God out loud together? It's, not, it's by not being apologetic about your praise. If you don't like the way I praise, you can tell the person, go sit over there where they're not praising. And hopefully, they'll take some of the fire where they go to sit and ignite a new praise. See, we sit in here as, as kindling. I've been noticing this morning, there is a, there, there's a smoking session, section in here. You know, and it's dispersed all through the congregation. And you are the ones that sit with the kindling that God gave you. Some of you have the spark and the fire to light the kindling. Some of you got the smoke that comes from when the fire is about to be started. And that gives birth to a full-blown praise break. Yes, yes, yes. Don't be ashamed of giving God praise. God gave you everything you have. You think you got that job by yourself? No, God gave it to you. You think you got that new outfit by yourself? No, God gave you the job to give you the money to buy that outfit. You think that you woke up this morning by yourself? I'm here to tell you this morning to give you praise that God woke you up this morning. I want you to think about this for just a second. So there you are in the middle of the morning. Some of you got home at 2, 3. Some of you didn't go home, you came straight to church. Come on, somebody. You can't say, if you can't say amen, say it's me. But for those of you that slept last night, imagine that you were asleep, just laying there. And all of a sudden, when it's time for you to wake up, just close your eyes, close your eyes. When it's time for you to wake up, God gently enters the room. God puts God's mouth on your cheek and kisses you. And that's how you wake up. That's God's love. That's God's favor raining down on you. So when you start thinking about what is it I have to praise about, I want you to think about that moment. Yes, yes, yes. When you sit in your car to drive to where you're going to go this afternoon, you're not sitting in that seat by yourself. You're sitting in the lap of God. That's why every once in a while when somebody cuts you off and you start to call them things that aren't on their birth certificate, <laughs> Your tongue is bridled because God is in control. God is driving you every day where you need to go, to your job, through your job. There you are sitting at your desk and that person or that boss who challenges, now everybody in here have a lot of nerves but you swear that you only have one, right? Here comes the boss. Here is that last nerve. And you think in your mind all the things you'd like to say, 
and God bridles your tongue. God said, I sent you to it. I will take you through it. But God also says, you got to give me some praise. I need your praise. I, I want to hear your praise. And you're right, Elder. God doesn't need our praise. But God appreciates when we give it anyway. Because praise in the church gives somebody else sitting beside you the opportunity to expel the same thing. You give license to praise by giving God praise yourself. Amen. You are, where's Minister Omar? You are disciples. Amen. Under the umbrella of God's control. And what God wants you to do is guide other people to him. Together, we have to remember that praising defines one's actions based on what the Lord has done for you. Praising out, out speaks to available praise, to obtainable praise. Praising out loud identifies lurid and flamboyant and brassy praise. Because everybody praises different. Some folk you'll see sitting in the pew going like this. And trust me, they're full of praise. Somebody is <laughs> clapping their hands. That's praise. And then there's those that kick their shoes off and start having a Los Angeles Seymour, a, a Zuzu moment. Huh? And start dancing and shouting and giving God praise. So you can tell the level of awareness and people letting you know and God know what God has done for them. Where is your praise? Did you take it out? Did you put it on your lap? Are you ready to give it to somebody else? Together, praising out loud together is corporate praise. This is a corporation, MCC, DC, UFC, DC. This is corporate praise, organized praise. I call it Pentecostal praise. A praise that comes from God through the baptism of the Holy Spirit. When that spirit hits you, you're not going to be able to sit there. When Jeff was up here directing, I almost lost my mind. I thought, I wanted to lean over to Elder Duane and Reverend Kathy and said, should we just go to benediction? <laughs> Because the choir are the disciples in this room. Praise the Lord today. Today I am reminded that praising out loud together brings us closer together. UFC DC, on some Sunday mornings when you have been out too late, you need to come in and sit in the service, 11 o'clock service, with MCCDC. MCCDC, some afternoon, if you got a little bit left, if Elder hasn't taken it all up, and Reverend Kathy hasn't drained you with her beautiful voice, and you got a little left, you can come to UFCDC at 3 o'clock. We'd be finished by 4. You can still get to Paradise Cafe. They'll have mac and cheese and everything still left over there. So we're not going to keep you too long. At Zuzu in Los Angeles, they said that the anointing of the praise was so pregnant with possibilities that sick people got well right there in the room. That blind people became seeing again right there in the room. That people that walked in on canes ran out the church shouting hallelujah because the Holy Spirit blessed them. Do you want that kind of blessing? Yes. Can you give that kind of praise? Yes. God only wants you to praise and worship for each other. God said, I already God this. Okay, I God this. But as disciples, your praise is going to bless the person that's looking at you give praise. For whatever reason, give your praise. 
When God, be, praise God because of a few things. Praise God because God is worthy. God is worthy to be praised. Praise God because God woke you up this morning. Somebody ought to already have clapped their hands. Praise God because God put food on your table. Praise God because he has many times made a way out of no way for somebody in the room. Praise God because he's a heart fixer and a mind regulator. Praise God because he pulled you through some really rough times. He may not come when you call him, but they say he shows up right on time. Praise God because he's a healer, he's a deliverer, he's a joy giver, he's a life sustainer, he's a friend to the friendless, he's a friend to the homeless. He knew who you were before you were even put together totally in your mother's womb, and God doesn't make mistakes. Praise him because you're alive today. I just praise God that I woke up this morning. I'm just happy about that. Praise God because he is God all by himself. So whenever you think about your praise, think of the possibilities that praise gives you. I want to spell it. Think of the rewards that come through your praise. Think about the anxiety that's taken care of in your praise. Think about what happens when you're in your praise and how you feel. Think about the salvation that God delivers to you from your praise. And always make it, I'm closing it out with the E, make it earnest praise. I ain't talking about your Uncle Ernest. I'm talking about real praise. Praise you don't mind getting the ugly with. Praise you don't mind crying and releasing and letting God know that, yeah, God, you did something for me, and I want you to know through my praise. Just make your praise hallelujah. You don't have to say anything else. Make your praise. Thank you, God. You don't have to say no special prayer. Make your prayers by just waving your hands. Make your praise by just stomping your feet. Make your praise by just saying this joy that I have. The world didn't give it to me. The world didn't give it, and the world cannot remove it away. Give God your total praise. Praise him in the moment. Don't hold something back, oh, I'll praise next Sunday. You, you're not promised next Sunday. And next Sunday can handle its own self. So praise God today to the fullest. And what we're going to do today, we're going to set up something for you to give God praise through. We've set up some spaces in the church. Somebody in the church may just want to kneel in prayer, have that quiet prayer. God, I've had communion. Jeff has just about made me lose my mind. The choir has sang me silly. Deirdre has prayed, played me crazy over here. Uh, Chris has beat the drums, made my heart race. You can come right here and kneel and have your own quiet time, your own praise time with God. And if you need a reflection of light, a, f a flicker, the fire in you and the fire in God can connect right back there on that table. You can light a candle and let that candle burn. And, and then what we're going to do is two churches. We're going to come to this table one by one as you line up. And just like you gave your offering, you're going to take one scoop of sand and pour it in the empty container to fill it all the way to the brim as we pour our praise together. Many colors in this room. Many shapes and sizes in this room. But in the face of God, we're all one. So we're going to pour into that container. And we're going to leave it. And if for some reason it overflows, then the overflow on the table is what God has already ordered for us to do.
There is an overflow. I want you just to close your eyes for one second. God, we come in the name of Jesus right now, and as we prepare to worship you in spirit and in truth in our own individual way, bless us as we kneel. Bless us as we light the candle, and bless us in the ritual of pouring sand. Let us rejoice and praise out loud together in your name. Amen and I'll share.